Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're doing another one of our music discussions here on uh, the Viratic page. Um, this dude, week we're talking about Let Live. Dude, fake history's lyrics. I, I mean, all of Let Live's lyrics are fucking intense. Yeah. I don't know too much about this one. Though. That's why I'm reading these. <laughs> uh, this week, we're talking about fake history from Let Live. Yeah. A uh, little bit of a throwback Thursday. Not too much of a throwback, though. It's 2011. Yeah. Um... It um, it's definitely an album. Yeah, <laughs> okay. It's definitely an album that like, when I first got into, uh, Let Live, like I listened to this like constantly. Like this this album is like on repeat. Um, I had the same feeling with Black is Beautiful. Yeah. But when when I heard about Let Live in general was 2013 when Black is Beautiful came out. I absolutely fell in love with that album. This one right yeah. here. We have Indie Crab. Um, I have the vinyls of this <laughs> latest release. I fell in love with that album, so I kind of backtracked to, to this guy here. And it it's just as powerful, just as good. And this band in general made me like hardcore music. And I give that Full credit to to Jason Butler, his songwriting and his talent of being able to scream with the best of them, but having some of the prettiest cleans I have ever heard. Yeah. And when was this? It, it was right around the time that uh, Fake History came out that he was he was in a um, Kerrang top fifty music like top fifty like artists or something like that like just musicians out of, like, all, like, the alternative and, like, indie scene, he got number fucking one. Jason Butler, they were relatively, like, Let Live was a relatively undiscovered band at that time. They had a couple albums out, but, like, nobody really, like... The one that came out in 2007? Yeah. No I don't one, even know the name of it. Nobody was really into them. They spent something like four or five years, like, honing their craft because uh, they just, like, the they weren't too like crazy about their musical direction so they just spent years practicing and they come out with fake history and it's just like the lyrics are spot on the music was great and his vocals were just amazing and everyone just kind of like discovered them and were like whoa these guys are sick so and uh, they span so many fan bases you know uh, from the pop punk kids to the metalheads they they can really hit everyone because they, they just hit the nail on the head with their talent and they don't they don't mark themselves as a gimmick band you know they're not a one-trick pony they can do they can do it all and i love that about them yeah all of uh jason butler's lyrics they're all really like either political or have something to do with like some crazy shit that he went through in his life but they're all just they're so intense and he just does all these songs with like such freaking power that he just just goes insane with it. The way he writes is kind of the same way that he does an interview. He's very cryptic. You know, you you hear it, and this is something Dave and I were just talking about. You hear it, and that's one thing, and you're like, oh, that's really cool. And then you sit down, and you read it, and you study it, and you break it down, and it's so so much different. You know, a song read about, uh, like, just reading spoken word, Let Live, to Jason Butler performing it has two different meanings. They are crazy good when yeah. it comes to just lyrical power and emotional connection. They, I, I said it before, I'll say it again, they, they hit the nail on the head and continued to do so into 2013 with Black is Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, this album came out in, like, 2011. I don't think I got around to it. I, I didn't get around to it until, like, a little bit after it was out. I remember having it being shown to me by our friend Brandon back in, like, like, my senior year of high school. So back in, like, 2000. It was either 2011 or 2012. Shout out to Brandon Rodriguez. He's in two of our videos already. Our... Boy 94 on Instagram. <laughs> and he's in our year in review, 2014, and our Have Mercy reviews. Yeah. Or, reviews and discussion whatever yeah please <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he showed me this band and like 
right away. Like he just showed me uh, Lit Prologue, the first song going, and like how nicely it goes into six 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 point eight billion, which is the second song in the album, and just like the flow of that was like. I'm I'm like a big stickler for flow. I've probably said that before. <laughs> and like how seamlessly it switched over and how good the fucking switch was and how crazy shit got. I was just like, all right, I can dig this. Like he showed me Sick Sick first. Like he just showed me like their music video for it. I was like, oh yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right, now listen to the album. I was like, all right. And he just gave that to me. And I was just like, oh my God, this is so good. And like every song is just as intense as the last. And Jimmy, get your fucking <laughs> just through his phone. All right. Um. Anyway, yeah. Nah. It and when you like look into the lyrics, like it's definitely like a lot different than just like listening to like this guy screaming. Because sometimes you have no idea what the fuck he's saying. Yeah. He gets like so crazy that you're just like, are those are those words or just animal noises? <laughs> He, um, Dude's a fucking animal. He is a fucking animal. He's like, insane. Uh, we used to make jokes about what uh, what it would be like to spend a day with Jason Butler. Like, would he just throw himself into a mailbox just because it's hardcore? We don't know. We don't know. But you did actually get yeah, the chance I, to meet um, him. I got to meet him. Yeah. I put shit. a rest to all of those jokes. Yeah. Ah um, oh, man, when was this? It was like 2013. Uh, it was right before Black is Beautiful came out. Maybe. He, you it were was upset. yeah. They did not play Banshee. You You're were right. upset about that. You're right. Yeah, it was it was right before Black is Beautiful released. Banshee was at least out, so they had one song off Black is Beautiful. Their the first single, that single, was out, and I went and saw them like up in Long Island, and they were supposed to play at some bar, but Shout out to Veronica Henry. the band yeah Veronica <laughs> is our friend from Long Island who uh. Uh, who every time we go to shows up there we're like hey if shit goes wrong can we sleep at your house yeah. <laughs> essentially that's what happens uh, concert, buddy. yeah uh, listens to a lot of the same stuff as us uh goes to school with brandon so that's how we know them Shout out brandon, oh wait okay, okay. uh anyway so it was supposed to be at some bar but the venue closed down because people in long island aren't too happy about punk bands apparently yeah. <laughs> so what happened was the venue was at like some like it was called like a moose lodge nice essentially what it was it was somebody's house where they knocked out all the walls on the first floor so that the kitchen the living room and the dining room were all one big room and there the band played on the floor there and needless to say shit was fucking rambunctious Oh, and it was called the Moose Lodge because there was a fucking moose head on the wall. That was like that. That I guess that's why it was called the Moose Lodge. Rambunctious. That's a good word. That's, that's a fucking old timey word, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Yeah, shit was crazy. Like when Letlib was out, like each band member was being stormed by the crowd. So like all the opening acts, like a bunch of the people from the bigger guys from the opening acts, so, like all like the like. Either, like, the fat guys or, like, the muscular guys from the openers just all came out and just made a fucking wall. Like, that's what it took to keep everyone back. And me and Brandon were fucking front and center, screaming every goddamn word back in Jason Butler's face. And it was amazing. Now, um, I have never gotten to experience Let Live Live. Unfortunately, I could not make it to that concert because of work and or crazy ex-girlfriends. Not sure which. We, we were trying to figure it out before. Yeah. Um, probably both. But... <laughs> could be a combination. But... Um, if you have the time, be, and you should because you're on YouTube now watching us, just type in that little search bar after you're done watching this video, Jason Butler Live, and you can see him flipping, running through balconies, jumping into fences because he can. Uh, yeah. He's, he's <laughs> awesome. This is just like, at some fucking, like, festival, he just, like, gets off stage and just starts, like, jumping and face planting into a fucking, like, chain link fence for no reason. Because yeah. he's just that guy. Um, at the show that I went to, there was a lamp, like a light fixture in the on the ceiling, and he climbed up there and he took all the light bulbs out, and then smashed them on the floor and rolled around in the glass. Rolled around broken glass. You got bit in the face. I got bit in the face at that show. Uh, some dude fell on me and clamped down on my on like the bridge of my nose. That was weird. Uh, I was scared that I might have caught something, so I was like disinfecting it for like fucking like three weeks. Uh, yeah. That was fun. But yeah, I got to meet him. When was it? It was like 
It wasn't right before he said it. It was right before the people that were on before him. I forget who it was. Oh, it was some some crazy like metal band or something like that. It it, it was a weird show because it was like it was like one kind of like pop punk band, one like really kind of like chilled out indie band. Was it Harvard? Harvard, yeah, Harvard. Yeah, Harvard. Uh, well, that was the second time I saw him. Friends with the lead singer of Harvard on Facebook. Met him once at a show. Talked to him for like twenty minutes, and then I was like, oh, I'm gonna friend that guy on Facebook, and he just accepted it back. So I was like, all right, I guess. Guess I'm friends with this guy on Facebook. <laughs> so that means basically nothing, but it's kind of cool. Oh, for like a band with like probably only like fifteen thousand likes or some shit. <laughs> only fifteen thousand. It's, it's not much hey, considering not some of like some like other bands. That's true. But yeah, no, I got to meet Jason Butler, and it was kind of like the first time that I'd been starstruck. I guess you could say. I mean, I had met musicians before. Like, I met uh, Jesse from Harvard prior to that. I'd met Anthony Green maybe once or twice before that. But the first time I met Anthony Green, I wasn't super into Circus Survive, so it wasn't, like, a big deal for me. I was like, oh, I mean, I like this band. But they weren't, like, my favorite band at that point, as they are now. So when I met him, it was, like, it was cool. And now every time I meet him afterwards, it's like, I'm really into them. But I've already met him, so it's not, like, it's not exciting but seeing jason butler just hanging out for like before a set me and brian were just like dude that's jason butler like right over there like and he's like what do we do i'm like we talk to him he's like well, what do you say he's like i don't know like hey dude I like your music i'm psyched for the show i mean talk to him about like that shit and he's like you and brandon are very awkward when it comes to meeting musicians i, mean, I just kind of walk up to them yeah like, no i mean like that time i was like no we, we gotta fucking talk to him man we have to fucking talk to him. No, my phone's going off. <laughs> uh, I was like, we have to talk to him. I mean, he's freaking Jason Butler. Like, we're not going to talk to him. So we go and talk to him. And he's like, really like down to earth. He's really like calm. He's really chill. And it's just like, this is not the man that we have seen on stage. Right. This is someone else entirely. And he's like, he's a smart guy. Like, he definitely like, he's definitely like tuned into like politics and shit. Like, he knows what he's like talking about. He hates fucking politics. What's up? <laughs> he speaks very intelligently as well. Yeah. You know, if you look up any one of his interviews, he he can almost talk somebody in circles and answer your question without even mentioning it. <laughs> without providing an answer. <laughs> yeah. He, it's it's kind of cool. For somebody who hates politics, who hates politics, he's probably the ultimate politician. <laughs> and maybe it's because us as a fan base are so enthralled with him that we just kind of accept anything he says as an answer. But I I just think he's a fucking genius. So yeah. I mean, I don't agree with like some of the shit that he says, but like you can talk, tell he's talk, passionate about. Yeah, he's very passionate, and like talking to him was like a really cool experience, and. Like, one of the things that I was saying was, like, to him, I would have never expected you guys to, like, tour with Harvard. Like, you know, how did that happen? And he's like, oh, yeah, we called him up and we're like, hey, dudes, we love your music. You want to come tour with us? And they're like, oh, dude, we love your music, too. Yeah, we'll come tour you. It was basically that. Like, that's what the, the entire, con like, that's what that whole tour was. It was just them calling some people being like, hey, we like your music. Want to come on tour with us? And we're like, that's uh, that's so that's awesome. That's that's like how it should be done. That's pretty much what happened with their with their um with Black is Beautiful. They've been doing very slowly a renditions run. Um, I think the first song was with uh, Keith Buckley. Keith Buckley, and it was uh, Twenty Seven Club, which yeah. was off Black is Beautiful. And I don't think I think they're, oh they're both off Black is Beautiful. Yeah, the, I think all of the songs are going to be Black is Beautiful. But, um, and then we, we already talked about in our uh, Aaron West in the Roaring Twenties one, which, you know, you should go watch that yeah, too. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we talk about how when we met um, Soupy, Soupy. Cam yeah, we met Soupy Campbell and he did, a, he did uh, one of the rendition songs for the dope beat. And we're like, oh, what was it like to work with Let Live? And, you know, we talked to him about that. That was pretty cool. Yeah, and, and that's all the same thing. They just, they do everything very organically. And you can hear the low production values in their music. But I think that's part of, and I don't, I don't like using this term a lot, but it's part of the charm of the album. You know, it, it, it pulls it all together for me. And it's not like it would be worse if the production value was better. I just feel like the raw recordings make it 
feel it, it adds to the aura yeah it's like most of the reason that black is beautiful didn't do like super great reviews wise was everyone complained about the production value that was my 2013 album of the year though but for me yeah it was the same thing like that was like that year that was like the fucking that was the pinnacle of like all punk that i had heard at that point i was like this is this is amazing this is fucking 10 out of 10 but like a lot of people were like eh, it gets like a c plus because it doesn't sound it doesn't sound too great it's like all right whatever but fake history has got the same thing going on it's like everything's really powerful but the production value is not that high so they don't really spend too much money on that because i don't think up until recently they really had that money to spend now they're doing bigger tours. Black is Beautiful is doing well. They're starting to do these mm -hmm. renditions. And their like, rendition songs have had yeah. much higher yeah. production value. And they're they're very clean. And it, it's not that they're bad. They're v fucking awesome. But the original run of the album will still hold a certain oh, place yeah. in my heart. Um, speaking of holding a certain place in my heart, I feel like we got away from fake history, which is what we wanted to talk yeah. about a little bit. Um my favorite song on the album is Mother, and I uh, I was just sitting here reading the lyrics before, and it is, I'm just going to read part of it here. Um, I'm sure those of you that are watching this have either heard this song before, or if you haven't, this is enough reason why you should. And all because of you, now I can't stand it. In all that I do, all that I do, I see the Scarlet Branding. Mother, you know I'm sorry, but sorry's pregnant with remorse. And when remorse is born, remorse won't see an ounce of child support. Just the writing of that and comparing apologies and remorse to a pregnancy when you're talking about your mother, just the artistic value in all of that is orgasmic. You know, <laughs> it, it is. It is It is like a hipster's wet dream to read that poetry. <laughs> That's what it is, because you're taking these obscure things, putting them together, and the entire song is about his mom and his relationship with his mother, I, and it's chilling the way he ends the song, just repeating over and over and over, don't you cry, mama, we'll be okay, and rising and falling with that. I think it's almost half the song of him... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, very subtly coming in. Don't you like cry, Mama? We'll be okay. Two, it's the last, It's got to be the last two minutes, of, and it's like a all. It's like a five and a half minute song, yeah, it's and like at least two song. minutes. And he's just like, at one point, it basically becomes unintelligible because he's going so fucking crazy with it. But he starts so soft, yeah, and just like almost a whisper, and then gets so insane with it, and and I I'm getting chills now because the first time I heard it was just so moving and I don't know where it moved me. I don't know if it was an uplifting or a down pushing thing because my relationship with my own mom hasn't been the greatest thing my entire life. I'm, I'm very happy to say that we're on very good terms now, but I, at the time of hearing this album, it was just still so fresh and it was like pulling the scab off of a wound and then somebody pushing salt in it where it was so painful yet so when when the pain started to settle so relieving that i i just i will never let go of that song yeah that it, it and the term instant classic it's yeah. thrown around a lot but it is <laughs> for, for, for you, me Alex, it for is you. my instant classic yeah and he, every time before, they play it almost every show, and every time before they play, Jason Butler says at least, like, some form of, like, a story about how it happened. And the story that he told about basically why this song exists is, at the show I went to, he talked about how he wrote this song, for, like, about, like, his, like, mom and, like, you know, and all that shit. He was talking about how his he didn't really know how to act like a man because his, his dad was never really around for him like that's one of the things he said his dad never was really available to him for him so he didn't really know how to like act like a man so he didn't know how to deal with his feelings he didn't know what to do so he just would go out and he would just fight like he would just fight with people 
because that's how that's how he knew how to get rid of his anger and how to get rid of his pain. And it will, he says it was because it it was his mom that taught him how to be a man, and that's one of the reasons the song exists. Mm-hmm. And he basically told that and went right into it, and everybody was like, "What the fuck?" There's there's a live recording, and it, it honestly looks like they're performing in someone's basement somewhere on youtube of that song and it's a brief clip of him speaking before the song actually gets on and it's just him not even facing the crowd pretty much staring at a wall with a microphone Uh, jason is stupid jason is worthless jason is a piece of shit my name's jason this is let live and then breaks right out into mother And, and that goes along with the he didn't know how to be a man because up until that point Those are all the words that were in his head. He thought he was worthless. He thought he was a piece of shit. And then he grew up. Whatever that moment was for him to grow up, it made him one hell of an artist. Yeah. This this mother, like, Jason Butler and all of Let Live, they're very talented. And this album, motherfucking fake history, this shit right here is like what opened me up to them. And how I first heard about them. And it's just, it's a great album. It means a lot to me. I, one of the tattoos that I've planned, which I have to wait till I graduate <laughs> college or else, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to, uh, yeah, or, or else I'm not going to be going to college because I'm not going to have the money to pay for it. No one's going to help me pay for it. So yeah, that's the ultimatum that I'm in right now. But one of the first tattoos I'm getting is just, it's going to be this symbol right here. See if we can get it right. They're they're fucking the LL. That uh, and then the word stand up because that's one of the repetitions one of the examples of the like powerful song. powerful repetition that he uses in his songs. And the first song, the prologue, he's just talking about like all these injustices and just his tell just screaming stand up. Just like stand up for yourself, stand up for what you believe in. Yeah, the, uh, the end of that, when it fades into 6-6, six, six, it's talking about how, uh, I, w- I don't want to butcher it because it is his words, um, uh, now I'm on my way to the sun just to take him on for the place of God. And, you know, maybe that's a little bit of an extreme view, <laughs> that you're going to stand up so tall that you're going to take on the place of God. But, it, I mean, if that's what he wants to do, then that's what he's standing up for. And I, I think it is intentionally extremist to pretty much put in a hardcore perspective, the sky is the limit, stop letting the man hold you down. As hippie as that sounds. Yeah. And, I mean, like, I, if I was to count La Prologue and Sick Sick as one song, it would definitely be my favorite. Uh, otherwise, I, I don't know. I just, I can't really pick one. It's just those two songs together are really, like, really heavy for me, so... They do feel like one they, song. It feels like one song, but, like, I, I don't know. I can't really pick one, but I know yours is Mother, so... Absolutely Mother. And that's not to say that the rest of the album is bad. I know, um... What is it? Uh, Casino Columbus is Brandon's favorite song. Yeah. And that's uh, a very politically driven song. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's all about, like, the first kind of movement into Native American. Yeah. Uh, freaking. It's also about giving smallpox blankets to the Native Americans. There you go. That's part of it. Uh, it's really funny. I feel like this has just become story time with Dave and Jim. Uh, I mean, that would be okay. Maybe that should be the new title of the show. <laughs> story time with Dave and Jim. Yeah. Freaking, I'm trying to find it. And I believe, like, I probably... feel, yeah, I feel sick from the blankets they gave me. Yes. Yeah. One of the freaking lines. Do you and... know if he's actually any native at all? He's he's half black. I know that. Yeah. And he's think, very tan. I think he said he's half black and then a quarter white and a quarter like Hispanic. Okay. I think that's... that might be some sort of. I think that's what he is. I don't remember. He's. I. I remember watching an interview and he said what it was, but I don't, I don't remember. I, uh... Well, either way, he he has very strong feelings on that, and it, it translates into an amazing song. Even if you don't agree with the lyrics, the tune the lyrics out. The music is amazing. And yeah, uh, fucking listen to Let Live. Thanks for watching. See ya.